It was four years ago that Afghanistan introduced a landmark law aimed at eliminating violence against women. But human rights groups say the law is yet to be properly enforced and in the past few months there have been a series of murders and kidnappings of high-profile women, including some of the country's top female police officers. That's made protecting, recruiting and retaining women in the National Police more challenging than ever. Kate Arnott reports. Joining the Afghanistan National Police is viewed by many as a death sentence, especially for women. Last week, 38-year-old First Lieutenant Nagar was on her way to work at the Criminal Investigation Department in Helmand Province when she was shot dead by two gunmen on a motorbike. No one has claimed responsibility for the killing, nor for the shooting death of Nagar's predecessor in July. But human rights groups and other female officers suspect Taliban insurgents. They have given us a warning that one of us will be killed every three months and that we will be killed one by one. When the Taliban came to power in 1996, women were banned from serving in the police force. The regime was removed in late 2001 and since then, President Tahmid Karzai has implemented several programs to recruit female officers with limited success. Aid agency Oxfam says even now, only 1% of the Afghan National Police is female. In July, there were 1,500 female officers in the force, compared to 155,000 men. There is a perception that it's culturally inappropriate, um, and there are some very old-fashioned ideas, I think, about, uh, and quite dangerous ideas about um, what contribution women can make to law enforcement. In its report, Women and the Afghan Police, Oxfam says female officers face sexual harassment and assault by male colleagues, and many find themselves performing menial tasks. We have to make the police force more responsive, a, a place where women can serve their duty and not just serve cups of tea, uh, where women aren't marginalised because they choose to serve their country by going into law enforcement. 28-year-old Pari Ghul is a rare sight on the streets of Afghanistan. She joined the police force seven years ago and is the only female officer working at this checkpoint in Kabul, a province that's one of the most accepting of women in uniform. She's well aware of the risks she's taking but is determined to make her city safer. We are the police and we should be brave. Several times I have arrested criminals. I'm trying to be brave in order to serve my country. I'm doing this not for money, just for my people and for my family. Parigul says her uncles won't talk to her because of her job, but she considers herself fortunate to have the support of her husband. And her boss, Colonel Samsor, says it's impossible to do his job effectively without more female officers. <laughs> Right now we have seven women who are working in this department. Some of them are working in security, some of them in human rights and some in the violence against women department. Soon we'll hire two more women police to make it nine in total. Next year we want to double that number. Colonel Samsor agrees with Oxfam's view that because few Afghan women and girls will ever come into contact with a female officer, many of them feel unable to report serious crimes against them. We know that in Western societies that it's often very difficult for women to talk to police men when it's issues to do with violence, whether it's domestic violence or whether it's sexual attacks or sexual assaults. Uh, and that's, um, that's something that's really exacerbated within the context of Afghanistan. Last year, the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission reported 6,000 registered cases of violence against women. In reality, though, Human rights groups say research indicates more than 85% of Afghan women suffer some form of physical, sexual or psychological abuse. In 2009, the government implemented the Elimination of Violence Against Women law, but it's had little impact. Violence against women remains endemic and I have urged the relevant authorities to do their utmost to speed up and improve 
the implementation of this important law. With female police officers key to making this law work, pressure is on President Karzai and his government to better protect, recruit and train them. Human rights groups say the need is even more critical now, with international forces due to withdraw from Afghanistan next year. As we progress through the transition period and beyond, it's imperative that human rights, particularly the rights of women and girls, are protected and promoted. Afghan women have a tremendous contribution to make to the future of their country, and they must be part of Afghanistan's civic life as leaders and decision makers.